Let's suppose that we have the entire genome of some organism, the entire DNA molecule that contains all the different types of genes that are found within that organism. Now the question is, if we want to isolate and study a specific type of gene, let's say a single gene within that particular genome, how exactly can we go about doing that? How can we find that gene, isolate that gene, and then make many copies so that we can actually study an experiment with that gene? Well, one way to do it, the common way to do it, is to first build a genomic library for that particular genome, and then we can use that genomic library to basically screen for that specific gene, to find that gene, and then to isolate and make copies of that gene. So let's begin by discussing how to actually make that genomic library. So let's begin with step one. Let's suppose in a single beaker we have a solution that contains that complete genome. So for simplification purposes, we have a genome in this diagram that only consists of five different genes. So we have this dark green gene, we have the red gene, light green gene, we have the dark purple gene, and the light purple gene. Now, we take restriction enzymes and we add restriction enzymes into that mixture. And what the restriction enzymes do is they cleave our genome into different fragments. And these different fragments will contain the different genes. So we basically break our genome into these five fragments. Now, let's suppose that these five fragments all differ in size. So some are large and some are small. And what that means is in the next step, in step two, we can use gel electrophoresis to basically separate the different fragments based on size up to a size value of 15 KB, where KB is kilobases. So we run our gel electrophoresis and those fragments that end up at the bottom are the smallest while the fragments that end up at the top are the largest and each one of these fragments contains some type of gene. So now we essentially have these five beakers and in each one of these beakers we have a single type of gene. Now the problem is we only have one of the genes. But to actually work with them, we have to have many copies of that gene. And so in the next few steps, what we actually want to do is we want to amplify, make many copies of each one of these genes. And one way to do it is to use a plasmid. But the way we're going to do it in this lecture is by using a different type of vector, the vector we spoke about previously known as a lambda phage. Remember, a lambda phage is a bacteriophage that infects bacterial cells such as E. coli cells and we can use the lambda phage to basically infect the bacterial cells and the bacterial cells can then replicate that DNA of interest. So in step three, we basically take cohesive ends and we add the cohesive ends onto the ends, the edges of these DNA molecules. So for example, we take this light purple DNA molecule that we isolated in step two and we add these cohesive ends onto the end of the DNA molecule and then we insert it into a lambda DNA phage molecule. So we take, we essentially extract a lambda DNA phage molecule from the lambda phage and we cut that molecule with restriction enzymes and then we insert that DNA fragment into the lambda DNA phage molecule or the lambda phage DNA molecule and so this is basically what we produce so this orange section is basically part of that lambda phage DNA molecule and this molecule has been inserted into that lambda phage molecule and then we can follow that with each one of these molecules we can create the following five recombinant DNA molecules and now we can take these recombinant DNA molecules and place them into those lambda phages the bacteria phages that are now ready to infect our bacterial cells and so now we have this army of these unique lambda phages that each contain their own unique recombinant DNA molecule. And <clears throat> 
And so in step five, we can, uh, we can actually take a bacteriophage, we can infect these lambda phage, uh, we can infect the bacteria, uh, we can infect those bacterial cells, the E. coli cells, with these different types of lambda phages, and then essentially those bacterial cells will reproduce and will lyse, producing many, many copies of these different types of fragment DNA molecules. And so at the end, we essentially have these five beakers and in each one of these five beakers we have many copies of these lambda phages that each contain a specific type of DNA fragment for instance in this particular let's call it beaker number one we have many copies of this lambda phage in this beaker we have many copies of this lambda phage in the third beaker we have many copies of this lambda phage and so forth now, the great thing about these lambda phages is they can live on essentially forever and we can use them at any time to infect other bacterial cells and produce even more copies of that particular DNA fragment. So once we create that genomic library, and by the way, this is what we call a genomic library. A genomic library is basically a collection of all the different types of genes found in that particular DNA molecule of that organism. And for the organism that contains this genome, we have only five genes, and so we have these five beakers that each contain a specific type of gene molecule within that uh, lambda phage. So in step six, now we actually want to screen that genomic library to find that specific gene of interest. So once we create the genomic library, we can screen the library to detect that specific gene that we want to isolate and study. And so what we do is we take the Petri dish and on the Petri dish, we basically spot the Petri dish with these bacterial cells that are not infected. And then we infect each one of these spots with each one of these types of lambda phages. So this lambda phage for uh, this spot is basically infected with this lambda phage, this spot is infected with this lambda phage, and so forth. And the next step, we have to go back into the lab and we synthesize a specific type of DNA probe. So we create a radioactively labeled DNA probe that has a complementary DNA sequence to that DNA fragment that we're looking for. And so what we do is we add the radioactively labeled DNA probe onto each one of these spots and only that spot that contains that DNA a fragment that we are looking for will will create a hybrid with that radioactively labeled DNA molecule and then we can take the results we can transfer them onto a polymer sheet and then we can take that polymer sheet and essentially expose it to the process of auto radiography and this will tell us exactly where that hybrid has formed and so for instance at the end of our experiment we know that within this spot we have that DNA molecule that that we actually want to amplify and so now we can extract and isolate that DNA molecule we can amplify it for instance in a process known as the polymerase chain reaction and now we have many copies of that specific gene of interest and so now we can study it, experiment it, and do many different types of things with it. So this is the process by which we can form genomic libraries and then screen the genomic libraries for specific genes of interest.